Hello! Tink and I are in the woods again. And we are... Yes, we're very happy. We're very happy to be here. We're very happy to be here. We're going to... Uh, we're going to camp overnight, aren't we? Yes. We're going to have something to eat. We're going to have a fire. And we are going to build a tarp shelter with a lean-to but with its own ground sheet built in underneath it. So I'm going to put up a ridge line between this tree and this tree and hang my shelter which I will attempt to take you through the best I can. Um, first thing I'm going to do is move the dog and clear the ground away. So stay tuned. Come on. Maybe this is a Benny Hill moment. So this is an attempt at a taunt line hitch. One, two, around that way through itself and that should cinch down to that you see that which is a knot which is a movable knot so I can tighten it when I need to I'll do one the other end as well and you'll see what I mean The ridge line's running along here. It's about waist height. I can tighten it or loosen it. So I'm going to leave it loose for now and ring up the tarp. Just to make sure there's nothing spiky under here because I don't want to lay on anything spiky, do we? This is DD. Three meter by three meter tarp. You can call it sill nylon, maybe. Lots of tie out points. I need some sticks. I've got some sticks. I'm just going to pull this bit through the loop, wedge the stick in, just sort of roughly pull it tight. And this one, and then should be able to adjust the tension on the ridge line using that fancy knot. Start again. Front ones. And that's what I want. So, same thing, only with the right tie up points. Front, middle three, I think it's five on here. Like I say, amateur. Amateur! Messing about in the woods. All those three, All right, there we go. Now, tension the knot at each end. There we go, that's better. And these 
going to use just a stake out the back. Which are the middle tie out points. <coughs> Didn't put a point on these because the ground is soft. <laughs> kind of. So you get the kind of idea down the front. Tied onto the ridge line, the back three. And I'm going to pull that out, peg out the edges, and the job's a good one. If I do that, and then I'll show you, rather than trying to show you as I go, because time's getting on for a change. Well, there she is, home for the night. It's not the most attractive shelter I've ever built, but it'll be okay. There's enough room in there for me and Tink to be laying down out of any weather. We're staked out. We're staked out in other, in other fashion. And yeah, job done. So I'm going to attempt to light a fire so I can cook food and maybe keep warm because it might get a bit chilly later. Uh, I will try to talk through the process a bit more than I did last time. I don't think. Principles, principles of fire. Fire triangle, uh, fuel, oxygen, warmth. For lighting a fire out here, what I've learned is you need tinder, then you need kindling, then you need fuel, and then you need to sit back and enjoy some camp life, um, which is what we're going to try and do. So I'm going to gather up some firewood. There's lots of fallen dead trees around here, so I'm just going to oh, okay. just going to gather some, and then split down some dead standing wood into super fine bits, slightly bigger bits. Then I'll have some logs, and I will make some shavings um, and get a, get a fire steel to it, a ferro rod should I say, and uh, yeah it's five o'clock so if I can get the fire going within the hour, because I think it gets dark at six, then I can relax a little bit and cook some food. Um, yeah, so let's get cracking. that you can see it's dead but still really nice in the middle that will be good for splitting down into little pieces and making making uh, shavings out of <laughs> legs apart so if you miss the axe goes between your legs safety tip Keep your hand there, I just use another piece of wood to keep it steady. Otherwise, you're liable to lose a finger. Oh, lay it down. Mm. 
these are probably as fat as my finger, which will go on a tinder first, then kindling, and these are well, sort of lightweight fuel, and that will help get it going. They're bone dry because it's out in the middle of the wood and it's been dead there for a good few months, I'm sure. So I've got some wood prepped. I'm going to try some curls. So this is going to be tinder. Nice big handful. Fire prepped, right? So little skinny bits. Little skinny bits. And then bigger bits and bigger bits again. And then here is the curls, shavings, whatever you want to call them. Okay, let's have a go. So principle being, the fire lay, which is these split down bits, that lets the air get underneath. So you need air obviously. And then I've got my, tin, my tinder, my kindling, my fuel. I'm going to drive in the spots in a vigorous fashion. you Adam and Eve it. It's not enjoying it. It's not having it. Almost went then. Give it some air. So, put a brace across so that you can lay them on and the air gets underneath. As soon as they feel like they're going. Next lot goes across in the opposite direction. That's the word I want. And the next ones come across that in the opposite direction. And just do a bit of layering. Now it's going. Should stay that way. The fire layer put down is keeping the um, air flowing underneath, but it's also helping with the heat because it's, the fire is not sitting on cold ground. The fire layer itself will obviously turn into a bed of coals after a little while, and that will be something I can cook on. Yes it will. A little kiss. A little kiss. Are you getting hungry? Are you getting hungry? <laughs> so for bedding tonight I've got uh, my Firmares mattress air mattress my wife got me for my birthday which is very nice of her thank you very much 
uh, I've got a reflective uh, car windscreen cover to keep the sun out and I'm going to put that sideways so it's under my torso but it sticks out so that Tink can lay on that and I've got a blanket for her as well and, uh, and we'll cuddle each other and obviously there's a fire just outside our shelter as well which will I don't know if it'll burn all night but it'll burn for a while so there's a couple of massive logs there that I've dragged over that I'll put on later hopefully that will help keep us warm she's got her back to me now I think she wants her dinner soon I bought her a tin of food um, which she'll enjoy yeah, so I'm going to get myself organised for food and then I'll show you what I've got for dinner. Supper. Tonight, I have got an onion, some butter, some carrots, some potatoes, and a bit of chicken. Oh, and some garlic. And some foil. So what I'm planning on doing is Trying not to get mud in the tin foil. Keep that going. So I'm going to put the tin foil there. There. I'm going to use the chopping board. Red onion, I'm just going to cut into pieces, chunks in my tin foil like that. Carrots, same kind of deal. Nothing too fancy. That's a lot of carrot. Potato. Another potato. So I've done this before when I've had steak and I've had the potatoes, carrots, onions and garlic. There's some garlic in there somewhere. There it is. Garlic I'm just going to crush in my hands and put in Hole. I'm not going to bother peeling it. And then the butter. Just sort of drop it in. Drop it in in knobs. Knobs of butter, they call it in the professional trade. So there we go, and that by itself is pretty tasty, but rather than steak I thought I'd try it with chicken, which is not always a sensible thing to take chicken camping, but I marinated it last night in olive oil smoked paprika and salt and pepper and I cut it into sort of I don't have to get my hands dirty I cut it into thin strips so it should cook in amongst all this other stuff reasonably well I'm hoping it'll be tasty
go. So that is that. Now the trick is I'll fold it all up. That is supper, I hope. And lay it very carefully. And yeah, just in there. Cross our fingers. That's dinner. I'll check back on how that goes later. But I'm going to make a cup of tea in the meantime. So that's supper on and I will come back to you in a while and see how it goes. Probably going to need a good half hour, 45 minutes for it to cook on there. I'll turn it every now and again and hope it doesn't split and, and, uh, and I go hungry. Unless I eat the dog food. So I see you soon. It's been cooking for getting on for an hour. Definitely sizzling. I reckon she be done. Question is, how do I dish it up? There. Watch it's hot. Butter catching fire, as you do. These bits of wood are a bit wet, so I had them on the back just to dry them out a bit. I've got some nice bits to go on later. I'll burn the funky, horrible stuff. While I was awake, I have to look after it. So let's see. <laughs> Dinner. Right. Oh, it smells pretty good. I mean, good. Let it cool a little before I do anything with it. Because we 
enough to be civilized. Oh, yeah. That's all right. It's in. Potatoes feel cooked. Carrots feel cooked. Tink likes the smell of it. I did feed her. She's had a ah tin of dog food. Don't lose the precious chicken. That might have to do me. Right, so. my dinner. It doesn't look the most appetising but I'll tell you what, it smells nice. I'm just going to clean my hands. Um, I've got some wipes somewhere. Find my spork, crack open my beer and I'll be right back. So, beer of the day. Another, another Classic from Lidl is the gnarly fox. And you know, right, I bought, I don't know if you saw earlier, but I uh, dug a little pit for the fire to go in. And I, I got a fold up shovel ages ago, and I bought that just so that, because I was lazy, I didn't feel like carving a stick to dig with. And the shovel has got a bottle opener. Unbelievable. He says when it doesn't work. It does work. <laughs> That's fantastic. So cheers. I'm gonna in this video oh fall off the back of a log. In this video I'm gonna say a little shout out and this is uh, to a gentleman called Big John who's a member of the DO, which uh, I shan't explain what that is, but if he's watching, he'll know exactly what it is. Cheers, Big John. Thank you for everything. Mm. This gnarly fox is gnarly. Oh, that's nice. I don't know what it says on it. Hathawood. <laughs> Craft Beer Company. Oh, I could read all that, couldn't I? Hang on. The Gnarly Fox Lager is a crafty combination of continental American and British hops, cunningly dry hopped and made with 100% British barley. This golden refreshing lager has an exquisite honeyed citrus and mandarin aroma. Do you know what it tastes of? It tastes of beer. Oh, so yeah, I'm hungry now. It's autumn here. It's a little bit windy, and there are chestnuts on the trees in this woods, and they're dropping all around me. I don't know if you hear them, but uh, I'm waiting for one to land on my head. They're, a chestnut is a little nut, I don't get them everywhere, but it's got a spiky outer layer. But uh, yeah, if one of them clocks me on the head, I'll know about it. So Tink's settled, she's much happier this time. She knows what we're doing. When I, when I started getting my bag out to get it ready, she was quite excited. That was last night. Yeah, she was wagging her tail, so I think she was looking forward to coming. So speaking of this kind of thing, wild camping, right? Something I was thinking about, because when I got into this, I got into it, I was ill uh, a couple of years ago now, and I was in bed for, for a little while. Um, a bit like a chest infection, pneumonia type thing. And I started watching YouTube videos and one thing leads to another and suddenly you're watching survival videos 
and end of the world videos. It's all very, I think YouTube just leads you there, doesn't matter where you start. Um, but yeah, a lot of videos I watch, they've got lots of expensive gear and I've been thinking about that because over the last year or two I've gathered various bits of gear. Um, but when you first sort of want to do this, you know, the, the instant thought is, I need everything. Um, and the truth is, you don't really. You need certain things. And so, what I just wanted to say was about, in my opinion, prioritising what gear you buy. If, you, if you're looking to get into this sort of thing, prioritising what you buy is important. My, this is only my personal opinion. Um, but I believe, because everything's expensive, I believe spending the money on comfort and warmth is the first place to go. Because there are many knives that are hundreds of pounds, hundreds of dollars. Um, I have a cheap knife that my wife got me for Christmas uh, in a present that was from the dogs, so ironically it was from Tink. Um, it's a cheap, one of the, whatever it's called, uh, the Bear Grylls um, Ultimate, which is slated everywhere. And it's okay. It does the job. I imagine if I stuck it in a tree and tried to stand on it, it would snap. But it's okay for splitting bits of wood. I've batoned with it. I've dropped it on the floor. I've used the pommel as a hammer. All those sorts of things where people say that, you know, I read a review of it that said I dropped it on the carpet and it broke in half. Um, but, you know, it, do, it does it, it does the job, it's okay. Um, I have a silky, silky gone boy saw, which is pretty good, but to chop wood in, you know, out in the woods, if you've got a rubbish saw, then... Um, it's going to take longer, it's going to hurt your arm. So I didn't mind spending a little bit, oh, it was only about £30. Um, I have a cheap, nasty axe, it was about £7 from, uh, from a local hardware shop. It's, it's got a rubberized handle. I was splitting wood at home from a fire at home without a glove, and I got blisters on my hands. I was only doing it for 10, 15 minutes. So I wear gloves with it. It's not particularly sharp, it's okay. It splits wood, it's an axe. So it kind of does what it does. But where I spent the money was on... Originally I bought a £10 eBay, came from China, self-inflating mattress. Turned out to be 2 millimeters thick, packed down to the size of a, a rugby ball, American football, uh, or a football, if you're American. Big job. Um, and it took up loads of room in the bag, and it wasn't very comfortable. So I spent £100 on a Thermarest Neo x Lite. It packs down to the size of this beer bottle, which is no room at all. It doesn't weigh anything, and it's about two inches thick when it's inflated, and it's really comfortable. I spent a bit of money on a Arctic Survival sleeping bag, a military issue. It's big and bulky, but it straps on the bottom of a bag, and jobs it couldn't. Pardon me. Um, but it's warm. It's really warm. I stayed out here in the woods last March with it, with, with Jason, my brother-in-law, and it was, I don't know, it was two, three degrees in the night, and I was boiling. I slept with it undone until about six in the morning when I got up and went for a wee and realised I was frozen and zipped it right up. But it's a, it's a, you know, all season, I think it goes down to about minus 20, so I've got no worries about that. For the coming winter, I'll be looking forward to it. Um, but as I say, this time of year, it's going to be about 10, 12 degrees tonight. I don't think I'll be able to do it up. Um, but these things, you know, the, the sleeping mattress and the um, sleeping bag, I think they're important. Um, and, the, and the clothing, the warm clothing is important. You know, this, well, blimey. That was one of them chestnuts that landed right by me. This shirt is wool-ish, I think, from, a, from, the, from the wool mill shop 
in the town where I live. Um, so it must be wool. But it's warm, you know. I'm not, I haven't got it done up. This is an old top. But I spent, I spent what I would consider an excessive amount of money on a um, merino wool underlayer, which I've not got on. Um, I wore that when Jason and I went hiking in the New Forest because it was colder then than it is now and it kept me warm. I think I took it off in the night because I was too hot. But come the winter, that's going to that's gonna pay off. I got some reasonably expensive, um, you know, thermal lined hiking trousers. I'm not wearing them now, but I got them last winter and I walked in them and, and I was hot. So, you know, being warm and comfortable is more important to me than having a good knife or having a good axe or you know any of the other myriad of things that that you know I see other people with. This I got this zebra billy can. I got this for my birthday from my mum. Bless you. I love you, my mum. Um, you know, Jesus. Um, before that, I had a Stanley cook pot, which is the budget version, and it's fine. It, it's a pot and it cooks. Um, but if you want to get into this sort of thing and you come out in the woods and you freeze to death in the night with your, you know, 300 pound knife next to you, you're not going to come back again. What's the point? So, uh, yeah, that's all I've got to say. <laughs> so I'm going to eat. I'm going to drink my beer, which is going down a tree. It does kind of taste a bit honeyish, And I've got a pot of chicken and vegetables and stuff. I'll just pour somewhere in my pocket. Yeah, people buy cook pots, you know, that are titanium and all. I look them up on eBay and Amazon. They're well expensive. So, I say, I would suggest being warm and comfortable. My tarp. My first, the first tarp I had was a cheap one from a, you know, hardware supplier, and uh, it was okay, but it was rattly. It, it made horrible noise in the night and kept me awake. So I spent a little bit more on this DD tarp, and it's got all the tie-outs and all that sort of thing. But you don't necessarily need it right off. So warmth and comfort, that's the key for me. End of lecture. And what have we got here? Potatoes. So yeah, this is onion, garlic, but <laughs> the dog's staring at me. Potatoes, carrots, chicken, and butter. And it's pretty nice. I can't see it because I've got a torch shining in my face. All I'm getting is potatoes. I'm looking for that glorious bit of chicken any minute. Gone out of the shot. I'll lean back a bit. Mmm. This is pretty good. So yeah. Had a hard day today. Been at work. I like my job, it's alright, but today was tough. I had some head office stuff. That was stressing me out. And now I'm sitting in the dark in the woods by myself. <laughs> Which is good. I used to play golf um, a fair bit. but and, and I really liked playing golf on my own. As well as with people. But I, I quite happily go on my own. I always liked it. But it really used to make my back ache. So I kind of knocked it on the head. And um, I've got kids and wife and stuff, so time is time is um, not always on my side. But my wife doesn't mind me coming out doing this because it makes me happy. She makes me happy, but uh, sometimes you gotta you gotta have something for yourself. Everything I do is for my wife and my kids. Um, I'm really lucky with them. They're great. But this is just a little, you know, one night 
I'd like to come once a month. I'd like to come once a week, but I can't. I'd like to come once a month, make a video. <laughs> bugs. There's weird bugs flying into me. Oh yeah, so the first video I made, I didn't really do a lot of talking because I was a bit nervous, a bit uncomfortable in front of the camera. But um, I sent it to friends and family and you know, I had a 20-25 views, which isn't really the point, I guess, it kind of is the point, but it isn't. Um, and these last few weeks, people have, people have been watching it. It's gone from being in, you know, 100 and something to getting up near 1,000 now, which is really cool. I'm quite touched by it. So, um, yeah, if you're watching, thanks very much. It's nothing compared to, you know, people I watch. I'm a big fan of uh, Joe Robinette. Um, he's probably my favourite person that does this kind of thing. He really knows his stuff. Um, and he's a funny man. I was a big fan of Alfie, Alfie Aesthetics. I love his videos, but he's disappeared again. Spindle Shanks has got him. Um, I watch TA Outdoors. Um, that's about it. I, I like Doug Outside as well. Um, but I don't watch too much more. But I get dead excited when there's a Joe Robinette post. <clears throat> and they get 25, 50,000 views overnight, which is just mental. If I, if I break a thousand views by Christmas, is what I said a couple of weeks ago, I'd be really happy, but the last couple of weeks it's gone, it's gone up by a couple of hundred, so potentially I might break a thousand at the end of this month on that first video, but whatever, whatever. This is going down a treat. Tink's staring at me just off camera. Thinks he wants some. Well, it depends. Depends if I can eat it all. Well, no, well, no. You're out. You're cute. My daughter named the dog Tink. It wasn't me. But it suits her. Although my wife calls her Lady, which is from a film. I can't remember what. Perhaps someone will know. Well, Lady in the Tramp, perhaps. So anyway, I think I've done rambling. Rambling. Spooky out here tonight. Oh, it's Friday the 13th. <laughs> Tink, I'll eat anyone that comes up though, won't you? You'll eat them, especially if I don't give you any of this. Well, spooky with all the... There's loads of leaves on the ground, so any animals going by, you can hear them. I saw a deer earlier, but didn't get the camera on quick enough. There's badgers in this woods. There's rabbits and things. Squizzles, squirrels. But, um, yeah, anything wandering about, you can hear it for miles. And um, all these chestnuts dropping. It's, um, it's a bit spooky. Anyway, ramble over. Um, I'll say goodnight later. I'm going to eat this, drink some beer, stuck up the fire, porridge for breakfast. Oh, Jesus. I was going to bring eggs and bacon, and I totally forgot. But I'd already put porridge in, but I thought oh, I'll do some eggs and bacon and cook them on the fire. But maybe like a sieve. So, yeah. Talk to you in a bit. I'm going to hit the sack. I've got the fire stacked up. It'll burn for a few hours. I'm already hot in this sleeping bag. It's a monster. So, uh, yeah, I think I'll be losing the hat and whatever this is called. And 
possibly these things and sleep in my sleep bag wide open but yeah my sleeping mat's nice and comfy and I oh yeah look I got this that costs me one whole pound from the pound shop and we'll see if it lasts the night but uh, yeah so it's good night from me and good night from Tink and I'll uh, check with you in the morning listening to the birds, there's a couple of owls nearby this morning, they're going crazy. I think there's a chestnut. Fat really well last night. This um, sleeping mat that I got. It's good. If you're on level ground, it's like being in bed. the fire stoked up and I laid in my bed and it was way too hot I ended up laying on top of my sleeping bag for a half hour so I started to feel a little bit chilly and then I got in but I didn't zip it up until must have been. I think it was about three o'clock in the morning. I woke up and I needed a, a wee. And, uh, Um, yeah, I woke up leading away. I pulled the hood part of the sleeping bag over me when I got back in, but I still didn't zip it up. I'm still not done up now. I don't think I've zipped up all night. But yeah, it was lovely and warm. It was really comfy. And, uh, yeah. I went out at some point. It's, uh, it's 20 past 7 now, and I'm, I really want a cup of coffee, but I'm also comfy and I can't bother to get up. How did you sleep, Tink? I woke up and she was sitting where she is now, you can't really see her, but she's just sitting on the, on the reflective thing that I put down. She slept way back in there, didn't you? In your little cave. At home, she tends to sleep under the bed, which is, you know, there's not much room. I think she just likes to be in a little cave. And so, uh, yeah, she curled up right in the back behind me. I woke up this morning and she was sat there on duty. All the birds have gone now, started talking. But yeah, it was really cool. They were making some noise. So I'm gonna lay here for a minute and get up. I wonder if there's any coals left in the fire that I could get going, otherwise I gotta get that going again. I don't know if I mentioned it, I kept some of the wood that I prepped yesterday. Ooh. So I've got all the basic ingredients, except for tinder, to get a little fire going again, enough to boil some water on. 
So I'm going to get up and do that in a minute, but oh, I might just lay here for five more minutes. going to have a very small fire. previous uh, video I talked about these cheap fire lighters and I thought I'd bring one this time. It's the, uh, the makeup pad special. Leave it, leave it, it's not food. Eat, come on, away. Good girl, sit. small fire and make up my whatever that is oatmeal stroke porridge depending on your geographic location apple and blueberry seems to be the one I always buy yeah so I'm gonna make some coffee and eat this and then I shall pack up and we're heading home aren't we Build it just below the line. It's got a little bit of milk and I might put it in there. Stir, stir, stir. Oh, it smells good. Place lid. I get these things, two in ones and three in ones. Two in ones are just coffee and milk, the three in ones are coffee, milk, and sugar. And I have sugar in my coffee, but the three in ones are really, really sweet. So, mixing the two, I'm hoping we'll offset the difference. I gave Tink her food and water in this, whatever it's called, insert. Job done. Thanks, Mum. Oh, it's like luxury. Real milk. What more could one ask for? It's been a good, it's been a good trip. I've really enjoyed it. More comfortable than the last time I came. Slept like a baby. And uh, nobody came and got me in the night. She's always nice. Tink looks pretty chilled. We had a little walk a few minutes ago. And she done her morning business. And, and uh, yeah, she seemed quite happy. Her tail was up, wagging away. So... I'm just going to sit and eat my porridge 
drink my coffee let this fire burn down a bit, put a bit too much wood on really I've got some spare water, I might just pour water all over it and then bury it but we'll see, I'll let it I'll let it burn for a while, I'm going to be here for another hour probably and it'll burn down and then I'll pack up properly I've sort of packed up but I've got to put it all in my bag <coughs> and then I've got to replace the woodland as I found it um, as is the way but yeah what we're we doing today? Saturday Son's got a football match. Um, might go and see my mum and dad a bit later on. Um, other than that, a bath perhaps, because I stink. I smell like a bonfire. But yeah, it's been good. So uh, yeah, later. Place the leaves and everything. I leave the area where the fire was without leaves on in case. Um, that's going to rain in the next day. So that's uh, that's pretty much made safe. Um, yeah, time to crack on. So we'd like to thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed it. Uh, another video, hopefully within the month. Yeah, if you can like, share and subscribe, we would appreciate that a whole lot. Push it on all your friends, uh, especially if you're not in England. That would, be, that would be grand. So yeah, thanks very much. And we'll see you next time. Go team.